Welcome back to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Today we, we look at Nigeria and the fact that we're still grappling with fulfilling our potentials. And that will be the crux of our conversation this morning on The Breakfast. 62 years after independence, the country is still grappling, like I mentioned, to fulfill her potentials. And most Nigerians believe that the country's main problem is poor leadership. The blame is on the callous and corrupt leaders who have systematically plundered the country over the years and left the, them have very dysfunctional and insecure and debt ridden. Contrary to the popular argument, we will be taking a look at our collective contribution to the decadence in Nigeria. Joining the conversation this morning is Christine Umo Kereka. She is a Nigerian-born health professional based in Canada. She's also the author of the collective contribution to a decadence in Nigeria. Thank you so much, Christine Umo Kereka, for joining us this morning on the conversation. Thank, thank you for having me. I really appreciate you guys having me. Okay, so so just as we let's start off with this very popular book. Uh, Chino Achebe actually wrote a book that's still very popular, and in in that book he said that the trouble with Nigeria is not with her climate, it's not with the people, but with the poor leadership. But that's contrary to what you have written and some of the uh, postulations that you hold in your book. And why is that? I wouldn't say it's contrary to it. All I'm saying is, is collectively, even including the leaders, including our political leaders, our religious leaders, our traditional leaders, and the citizens of the country. That's what I'm saying. The problem is not just hanging on one part. It takes a tree to make a forest. Uh, it takes a lot of trees to make a forest. It doesn't just take one tree to make a forest. This is what I'm saying, that we are all concentrating the leaders, the leaders, the leaders. But what about the citizens of the country? Look around everywhere in Nigeria today. Everywhere is corrupted. Everyone is corrupted. Uh, if you don't mind, can I give an example of just what recently just happened? Due to these interviews and promoting my book in Nigeria, I DHL a book to Nigeria so that at least today we can have the opportunity. You guys, we have the book. And I DHL it since, 2000, uh, since uh, Feb, uh, January 18 to Nigeria. And they told me that it will arrive in four days to Nigeria. I paid $454 to actually mail these goods. They mailed these goods. These goods got to Nigeria. They asked me I have to pay custom duties. They asked me also that I have to show all documents towards these goods. Everything they ask me, I have sent, including my work ID, that I have sent that if there is any question, they can question. But as of today, NDLEA is holding on to these goods only because I have two iPhone 10 in the goods. What has drunk got to do with uh, iPhone 10? These goods came all the way from Canada. There was no drug. Now in Nigeria, there is drug. They have not released these goods. Okay, my point here now, we are concentrating on the government and the government. The question now, is this a government? Is this a government? And I will tell you today that what NDLA is looking for is for me to give them money to release my goods, which I wouldn't. Of course, the government is at fault as well. Accountability. Your children are stealing. Mm. Uh -oh. What are you doing about it? Everybody has problems. Even when you get to Nigerian airport, to even pee alone at the Nigerian airport, they want you to pay for toilet paper, the people that sit there. Our morals, values, Everything is gone. We don't need have any integrity. Then we are crying there is no job. So if I had sent something now that is pertaining to give a job to Nigeria, the NDLEA is holding on to it. Is this right? Am I going to DHL again? So DHL staff now, they're not going to have jobs. Because the less, the less uh, goods that I sent, the less good people that experience the same thing that I have experienced, the less they have uh, sent as well, 
then the less there are jobs then they start firing people we are the problems of nigeria so, so Chris, christine are, are you say. saying a yeah, good example. yeah christine you're saying that you sent your books down to nigeria and you sent yes. them along with some personal items namely two yes. uh, mo mobile and, phones and yes. the national drug law enforcement agency which is a government agency that uh, fights you know uh, drug abuse and, and all that in the country, headed by yeah. former Lagos State uh, Military Administration, uh, Minister Buba Marwa, um, seized your your books and your phones. And, yes. And did they give you any reason? No reason. Okay. To be honest, when I call DHL, to be honest, on the background, I'm not going to mention them for confidentiality. They told me to go settle NDLEA if I want my goods. All right, and um, um, this this is quite a, a very sad uh, situation and a bad advertisement for Nigeria. I know uh, that if um, um, uh, um, Al Haji Buba Marwa hears about this, he'll be very very distraught. I hope that someone from the NDLEA is listening. Um, whilst we've invited this uh, Nigerian and I citizen, also do. yeah, who is doing a great work abroad and has written a book on Nigeria and how we can fix things in the nation, which actually is what the NDLE is trying to do. And she sent these things back home, her books back home, and some phones attached to them. And uh, officials of the NDLE have seized the phones when it has nothing to do with, with drugs. But anyway, we do hope that this situation is sorted out. Um, are there particular instances or um, particular uh, experiences that you um, may have heard of or have had um, that led to the thesis of your book, like Messi has said, she's so eloquently oh, quoted. Oh, because uh, I come um, to Nigeria a lot. Yes. yes, I live in this country and I've been living in, uh, I've been living in total all the countries that I've lived in, because this is not the only country I've lived in before, about 30 something years, but I come to Nigeria a lot. It's pathetic when I come home and see what is going on. It's really pathetic. And I know how much people I have to be sponsoring back home, which is genuine sponsoring due to the system that is going on. The system that is going on is impacted everyone. Everyone. Either you live in Nigeria, because I have people living abroad that, Christine, give this up. Why, why are you doing this? You don't even live in Nigeria. You left Nigeria 30 years ago. That is not true. If my aunt is 80 something years old, is not getting anything, I have to give her something to help her out, then it's affecting me. If my uh, nephew has lost a job, or anyone in my family loses a job that I'm helping out, that is affecting me. So indirectly, I am paying for what they have done to you. And it's really sad. And no one is saying anything. I don't even know what they pledged to. I'm talking about our political leader. I don't know what they pledge to when they take on government. Because I would love to read this pledge with you. I don't know what they pledge to. Because if this is what they pledge to, and this is what they are doing, I am so sorry. It's sad. Okay. So, so reading, um, you know, parts of, you know, some of the reviews that have been put out uh, uh, to your book that you have written, uh, let me ask you, how do you think that we have lost our ethical and moral and cultural values that are causing, uh, because in your thoughts, you think that all of this the is also causing the pain that we're facing? Front, I told you what the NDLA just did. This Apart is from not the that. only one. I have a friend. Eh? I have a friend that she's a medical doctor. They wanted to come establish in Nigeria. They sent a lot of equipment to Nigeria that cost over $200,000. They lost it to bribes. They end up giving up. And I am not exaggerating. They end up giving up and took a loss of 200000 Do you know how many jobs this will have created for Nigerians? This is what Nigerians don't understand, that they are killing their future and their children's children's future by doing the greediness. They're thinking only about now. They are not thinking about future. And, the, and because they are only thinking about now, they are not thinking about future. All they want is luxury lifestyles. Look at what has happened to us. We don't have power electricity. It's nothing to talk about. Our road is nothing to talk about. Can you tell me what we are known for in Nigeria right now, apart from petroleum oil? 
Can you guys tell me? Maybe uh, it's lack, I am lack to that knowledge. Okay, uh, Christine. Can you guys advise me? Yeah, yeah, Christine, you've made a lot of interesting points in this book. Uh, a very interesting book that you put out, A Collective Contribution to the Decadence in Nigeria. Uh, the average, you know, Nigerian who will hear this postulation of yours, that we all have made a collective contribution to the decadence, um, may disagree with you. The average, you know, Joe on the street may disagree with you when you say that we shouldn't point the accusing finger at the leadership, but everyone in this country has played a role. They would say, hey, I provide my, 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 my electricity for myself. I, I provide water for myself. I, I provide, some, in some cases, my security for myself. Um, I, in some cases, I have to provide my own roads, you know. Um, um, and, and, and I'm doing everything I can. Nigeria is, is, is even against me. So the leaders are responsible. Don't tell me that I'm responsible. I'm trying to do these things for myself. When people think that way, which goes against uh, the thesis or the idea of your book, what do you say to them? What does your book What I'm going to say to that, that that person that is saying it is, it might, I wouldn't say is, might even be one of these corrupted people. The person holding on to my goods today, that I am not getting the goods that wants bribe or want to steal the phone. If you ask him today, how is Nigeria? He's going to say, Buari is not good, they have to take Buari out. I have had somebody that was in the legislature that is a single mother, have three kids sponsoring abroad. This person is still complaining about the government that we have. So average Nigerians is complaining. But what about you guys? What about the chairman that has nothing when he was elected in your street, now owns 10 houses on that street? All the children is out of that country schooling abroad. This person will still open the mouth to tell you the government is not good. We are all partaking in it. I am not saying that the government is good. Don't get me wrong. I am saying collectively, collectively, we are all at fault. Everything needs to be changed in all jurisdictions, in the community, even inside the family. Because I started it from inside the family. Even the family system beliefs have to change. That the richer you are, the richer I'm giving respect to your motoba pawo wale ni ye mamu. That is something that they say in Nigeria. Then if I am a sibling that doesn't have money, and my parents are looking after the one that has money and running after that one that has money. What do you think I'm going to go do? Go look for the money by force so that I can get attention of my parents. So it starts from home in our community. Then, it, then from there gradually went up. Okay, let, let's, also, to, let's also share your thoughts on... Yeah, in the course of your book, you have also talked about the fact that, you know, the family system, you have blamed the family system largely for the lot of wrath that we're experiencing in the system and how the nation is actually turning out. Uh, we'd like you to throw more light on that. How is that a problem? And how does that even affect the fact that we're going to have an elections and you're still going to have a system that is not properly structured, a system that uh, the people have lost trust in? What's the correlation? The correlation is, you know, before something is good, we have to talk about socialization because we have lost our socialization in Nigeria, kind of. The cultural, the ethical values when they are bringing us up is different from what I know now. Like in the 80s, what my parents used to tell me, what I used to hear, what I used to speak, I don't see it anymore. All I see now is riches, wealth, and luxury. So a political leader that went stealing a lot of money, living luxury lifestyle, what is that message passing onto that child? Is it telling the child to know how to, act, to work hard? 
Do you understand? This child will never learn to work hard. So all this child is going to grow up to be is out to steal like the father or mother. Looking for comfort. He has never, they've never taught this person how to do this. And one thing that they don't understand is they are losing as well. And I can give an example. When I got to USA, I have a friend that I stayed with. He wants us to go into deals, how to make quick money. And I said, no, I want to go to school. I did been I have gone into the deals and this is what I am doing today. I wouldn't have known that I can become a registered nurse. I wouldn't have seen that registered nurse coming. It will never, never have been in my life. Are you there, Christine? Oh, yes, I am. Okay, so, so, so um, 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 finally, for those who want to, there are so many things to go into, you know, as far as the book is concerned, especially the fact that, you know, religion is not left out. You know, you also you took know, Oh, a, God, a I, I, I will attack that any time. Why? Why? I will why? attack that <laughs> what, has, what has religion done to, to contribute to decadence in, in Nigeria? When I think about it, I am so sorry, it makes me cry. Because they are the ones that are supposed to build morals. And they are the, most of them are the worst one in the country. I just couldn't believe what we have as religion today. Religion is supposed to be charity. But our religious leaders these days, they want to write jets. They are the ones living in a big building, even robbing Peter to pay Paul. Robbing innocent people that doesn't have money brainwashing these innocent people while they're living luxury lifestyles. Caught passages in the Bibles that is supporting what they are doing. And this is sad. They are the one to call our government to call. And it's a shame that right now, Nigerians don't even have where to go. We don't even know who to save us. Because it's, if our religious leaders is not saving us, then who is going to save us? It, it, it's it's quite, 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 quite sad, you know, and uh, I, I can, we I can sense know. that your passion, um, uh, um, you know, for the country and, and uh, really your sadness at the way things are. You know, sometimes it's easy to, to be used to it and then you sometimes lose, for those of us here, sight to the fact that things are not that good. But very quickly, in one sentence, um, we want to thank you very much for your time. I'm totally we're out of time, so I want to thank you very much. I was going to ask you how people can get your book, but would, um, I'm sure people can search like for it I online. just told you, NDLA is holding on to the book. All I right. sent it to Nigeria. All right. we'll, we'll leave it at that. We'll leave it at that. Thank you very much, uh, Christine Umokereka, for your time. She's the author of the book, Collective Contribution to the Decadence uh, in Nigeria. We sincerely appreciate you coming on and giving us uh, your and thoughts I really appreciate heart. you guys having thank me, you too. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Well, that's the size of the conversation. If you missed out on any part of it, it's okay to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. It's at Plus TV Africa. And do subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Messi Boko. Do have a fantastic day. And I'm Kofi Bachelos. Good morning.